Hello, Heartbreak family, and welcome to another episode of The Breakdown. We're super excited for today. Today, we have some of the most amazing people with us. But before we start, I just want to say that this Sunday, service was amazing. We had church outside. We had our first church with our new tent. We had church in, in the shade. It was awesome. Pastor A preached a powerful message on the blueprint, and I love it. Um, if you're out there and you're watching us on Facebook and YouTube, go ahead and drop an emoji. If you love The Breakdown, drop two emojis emojis. We love you guys and we love to see your emojis. So now let's get to it. I want to introduce my guests to you and today we have Pastor TJ, we have Jennifer, and we have Angel with us today. How are you guys doing today? Tired. <laughs> tired. Yeah. I'm tired good, but I'm tired. <laughs> awesome. Yo, well, one of the things that I think uh, is becoming culture and the breakdown is you know, uh, icebreaker question. So I have an icebreaker question for each one of you and I'm going to start with Angel. Angel, tell us, what's the story of your first crush? Oh, you're awesome. <laughs> you're just great on those questions. Um, my first crush that I can remember, obviously, since I grew up in church, it was in church. I'm pretty sure I was like two or three. No, I think I was four. Okay, come on, somebody. And I, it's like when you're in kids' church and, you know, it's the kid that you see every single Sunday because that's like the only kids you see um and he was like my friend because my mom was friends with his mom that's how it happens when you're kids um yeah and I, I just I, I think he actually was mean to me but I liked him because he was the only one there Come on. um but yeah that's pretty much it held hands during prayer if you are out there and you uh like someone Stand next to them in prayer. <laughs> um, and Jennifer, I'm going to ask you, okay. what, are, what, are your, what are your favorite songs from your teenage years that you still rock when nobody's watching and nobody's listening? Um, Let Me Love You by Mario. <laughs> Let me be the one to... Come on, somebody. Da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the songs. Um, I still listen to T-Pain. You know, remember awesome. T-Pain? Like T-Pain, but like the Jesus version. Jesus version. <laughs> um, what else? The old school's Rihanna. Okay, um, okay. Neo. That's awesome. <laughs> and now the one and only, the warrior, the bishop. Um, Pastor TJ, what is your real favorite book? And what book do you pretend is your favorite so you can look smart? <laughs> My bro. <laughs> 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 we'll just go with the Bible. <laughs> the Bible for books. Come on, somebody. The Bible is awesome. So thank you guys so much for being here. Um, I've been so excited just for the breakdown. And, um, you know, Pastor Abe started a new series called The Blueprint, and I love it. I think that The Blueprint is so important, especially, uh, you know, when, whenever an architect or a developer or construction person is going to build something, the first thing that you need is The Blueprint. And I can relate that to being a man and woman of God, you know, you know, Jesus being the architect and leaving the blueprint for us of how to have our foundation and, and, and how to build something from, from scratch. And I love it because the first uh, message from Pastor Abe in the new series, The Blueprint, is the house we're called to build. And I think that's so important because it's what we build here is how we're going to attract the people out there. You know, Pastor Abe always says that you can't give people in public what you don't receive in private. And that's so important. I think that the blueprint is we, we begin here at home. And if we be here, begin here at home and we get this right, we, we'll be able to attract the people out there. And I have a few questions for you guys. And um, before I start, uh, Pastor Abe read from John 4, 14, verse 2 and 4. And it goes like this. Let not your house be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many rooms. And if we're not so, why would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself that where I am, you may be also. And you know that way to where I am going. Wow. You know, Pastor Abe said so much about this, and honestly, when you open up the scripture and you, and you really dive into it, you can say so much from it. And I have a few questions from you guys, and you know, 
one of the things Pastor Abe said is that this is not our home. And I love that because if you study the scriptures, there's a lot of scriptures that talk about that we're not citizens of this world, that we're just here passing by. And Pastor TJ, when it comes to that question of home, um, what does it mean to you to, to, to not make this your home? What is, when somebody says, Pastor TJ, this is not your home, what do you say to that? Um, it makes my flesh anxious because to, to live in the unknown for the unknown, uh, it makes my flesh literally like, so when we read the scripture that in my father's house are many mansions, we're like, that gives us some comfort because it's terms that we use. So we're like, oh, cool. We get like a big house, you know, so we relate it to here. But when it says uh, there's many mansions, it just means many different dwelling places. And so when Jesus died, he said, um, I'm going to pour out my spirit. I'll leave you another comforter. So what he was saying, when I, I go away to prepare a place for you, but the, the place that he was preparing for us was the place in us, because it's not that heaven wasn't ready for us, but that we weren't ready for heaven. So he's taking this whole time to work in us and prepare us for a prepared place. Yeah. So when um, I'm here, I'm like hanging on to worthless things and idols and things that make me feel significant or secure. And I, when I think about home, um, a lot of times, like, I'll miss home, but I'll miss home when I was, like, eight years old because it was the most secure place. And it was, it was that secure moment that made me feel like mom and dad are okay, the lights are on, the food smelled a certain way. So it gave me a sense of false security. Mm. And then as I kept living in that home and then that home became unraveled, it's not until your home becomes unraveled that you realize this is not my home. Wow. So what happens in life is life keeps poking holes in your boat to let you realize, man, there is no place that is so safe and secure in this world outside of Jesus. So where is home? Home is to rest in the arms of Jesus, both now and forever. Wow. That's so powerful, Pastor TJ. Thank you. I, I, I agree with you so much, you know. Um, and I felt it when you were saying it about being in God's arms, in Jesus' arms. And that is the goal. You know, I call it, uh, you know, the world is like extra credit, but Jesus is the prize. Jesus is what we we long for. And, and to know that he went away, died for us to build that home, but he's coming back and he, we're going back to him. That's beautiful. Um, Pastor Abe spoke about building a house that looks like God's heart. And I love that. You know, sometimes we... Church becomes uh, so many other things than that, that God's heart and, and building God's heart is what it's all about. And I think it takes all of us to really understand and study what the heart of God is. And Angel, I want to ask you a question. When you hear something like building God's heart, what does that mean to you? Yeah, when I when I hear building God's heart, I really do hear love. I hear joy. I hear peace. I hear forgiveness. I hear grace. Because Jesus is all those things. God is all those things. And when I think of the home, when I think of here, when I think of the church, when I think of the heart of God, I think of, man, I really do pray that we're a church that's gracious. I really do pray that we're a place where people can come and get forgiveness and know that that is Jesus's characteristics, that we are living that out, not only in our personal life, but when people, we get to encounter people here in this home and we get to show people like, Hey, this is who Jesus is. This is his heart. This is his makeup. He is this. He's not loving. He is love. He isn't gracious. He is grace. He isn't forgiving. He is forgiveness. And so just, I think that to me is, is God's heart. Wow. That's so awesome. And I love what you said because, you know, one of the things about Jesus and, and the reason that I believe the Pharisees were so shocked is the fact that he would eat with sinners, that he would do the things that all these people that had it together wouldn't do. And right now the world is not looking for the person or the pastor or the leader that has it together. They're looking for the person that, that, that's able to compare with them in their weaknesses, that shares with them in their weaknesses. And I believe that the church and, and, and the people of God need to understand that, that we are the church, that we are broken, that we're not perfect, that, we, that we're never going to be perfect, but we have a bunch of people that are broken with us. So I love that point. And um, 
one of the things that Pastor spoke about was when he was young and he had a he had a youth pastor that was praying specifically for his spouse, and then God gave him the spouse, and and, and it showed him the the power of specific prayer, even to the point that it brought Pastor Christian five, five one like he wanted her a fun size like he says, and um so Jen, I want to talk to you about specific prayer. Um, what is something specific that you prayed for, and God answered you exactly what you asked for? Let me see. Well, I think, um, so just to take it back a little bit. So I grew up in an apostolic church, um, and that was something that, you know, I just grew up in. But always in my heart, I always prayed and I really asked God for a specific kind of church, you know, not a church that would just look at your appearance, you know, or anything like that, like, but really looks inside the heart, you know what I mean? people, people, like you love people. And I think for me, something that I prayed specifically was that God, like, if this is not the church that I'm meant to be in, like, I pray that you send me to the church, you know, that you want me to be in. But my heart asks for a church that is not just looking at your outward appearance, but is, is cares about your heart, you know? And I felt like growing up, I didn't really feel like the people at the church that I used to go to really cared about my heart. And so I feel that when I got to this church, I really noticed that people really do care about you. People really do care about your heart and care about your brokenness and care about where you're at. And I think that that's something specifically that I pray to God. And I knew that in my heart that I was going to go somewhere else and I never knew where, but he brought me here. And that was something specific that I asked God for. And now I'm here. Wow. So, yeah. Well, that's awesome. Um, and you're so right, you know, like. Um, what attracts people it's people that are that are ready to listen yeah. um, people that are that can empathize with you that can actually li you know sit there with you and be yeah. there for you and I have seen this here and I love it you know I have some of my best friends that come to this church and it's so awesome and um, one of the you know Pastor Abe touched on so many things but this is something that caught my eye and Pastor Abe spoke about being a shepherd, and he mentioned three of the most powerful stories in the Bible, which is the particle son, the lost coin, and the lost sheep. Um, Pastor TJ, in your own words, what does it mean to be a shepherd of people? You know, the problem with questions is my ADD, because as <laughs> soon as you say something, I have all these other thoughts. So what's the question? <laughs> so, you know, uh, Pastor Ray was just talking about, you know, like, uh, the, he mentioned all three stories. And, and what does it mean to be a shepherd? You, yeah, to, what, to you, what does it mean to be a shepherd of people? Um, I, th I like where uh, when the Apostle Paul, he, he was a great sinner, and he became an apostle, the Apostle Paul. Mm -hmm. And then he said he was the least of the apostles. And then he said he was the lesser of the least of the apostles. And then he later on said he was... A sinner. Then he later on said he was the chief of sinners. And so um, what I saw is the progression of faith, of being a more, um, having more dependence on God, not more independence from God. And so a lot of people want to be like sub shepherds and they take cultural ideals of like how to lead people or 10 tips on how to fix people. Um, and the only way to shepherd God's sheep properly is to grow more dependent on the shepherd mm -hmm. wow. and to um, realize I'm just as broken as these people. So now I don't have this like superiority of like, listen, guys, I got a message for you. No, I don't have a message for you. I have a message that God's been preaching to me and uh, transforming my life with that I want to share with you. Yeah. So hey, I have something to teach you based off of this knowledge, you know, because we're in an age of information, right? So with that, um, any wisdom that you have that hasn't been filtered through sorrow on the other side of that filtering system without sorrow is, uh, the Bible says, knowledge uh, puffs up. So we have a lot of smart people who know the right things to say, to do, how to, how to be. What does being a shepherd look like? That's what like a Pharisee would say. What does it look like? Not what does it feel like? You know, when you jump in a pool, you never say like, hey, what did it look like when you jumped in the pool? So what did it feel like? What what was the experience like? What is it like being a shepherd of God's people leading? It's a huge responsibility that 
makes me have to depend on Jesus every day. And it doesn't make me more prideful. It makes me more like humble, like, God, I need you because I know me and like, I'm going to screw this up. Yeah. So I need you, Jesus, the good shepherd to help me every day. So when I come to church and I see an older lady, the Bible says I appeal to her as a mother. When I see a younger lady, I, I appeal to them as sisters. When I see a, a younger man, I appeal to him as a brother and an older man as a father. So now I'm a shepherd of God's family. Yeah. So now I'm ministering to people from a place of dependence. And I think the greatest shepherds are those who walk in humility. And how does humility happen when I walk in total dependence or at least an attempt of total yeah. dependence on God? No. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that, you know, uh, you know just being fully dependent on God. And I think that, you know, when you're going to work with people and God has trusted you with his people, um, the main source of our of our energy has to come from Jesus. And we have to die to ourselves constantly. Uh, we have to be able to pick up the phone where nobody else wants to pick up the phone. We have to be able to be the, I call it being a bridge. So I love what you said that, especially being a pastor and you having the experience of different kinds of people, you know, and I think it's important for people to understand the view of a pastor when it comes to shepherding people. So thank you for sharing. I think that's Colossians too, where uh, Paul said, he works the energy in me that I work out. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's he good. gives you the energy to do it. Yeah. yeah. That's so good. And Je yep. so Jen, um, you know, b back to the three uh, stories that Pastor Abe was talking about, the particle son, the lost coin, and the lost sheep. I want to ask you something. Um, describe to us what leaving the 99 for the one means to you? Um, let me see. I'm just like Pastor <laughs> TJ. Um, leaving are, the 99. Because we, we're, we're both from the apostolic church. So. <laughs> yeah, that's why. <laughs> he gets me. Um, I think um, when you leave the 99 for the one, that really just truly shows what God's love is. You know, and I think for me, um, no matter, you know, you can have like, for example, me, I have my life group, you know, and I have my girls and everything. And it's like you see the ones that are const like constantly coming and they're consistent and everything. And that's that's dope. You know, cool. They're coming. But as soon as there's one that's like starting not to come anymore or is like, hey, like what's going on? She's not coming. You know, you reach out and you you put yourself out there. And you're like, hey, you know what? Like, I don't know what's going on, but if you want to talk, I'm here for you. And just even if they don't want to come back, because sometimes that happens, even if they don't come back, I think you still have to show that love to them, still continue to reach out. You know, and recently it's 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 happened to me. You know, where I feel like, you know, there's somebody who stopped coming to life group. And I know that person's going through their thing right now. And even though it's so hard sometimes to leave the 99 for the one. You know, I think it's so necessary for you to continue to practice that because that's who Jesus is. You know, it's hard because you're like, I have all these other people, but in your heart, you know that there's one sheep that's still missing and we can't like give up on them. You know, Jesus never gave up on us. And I think that we can't give up on them, even if we wanted to, you know, even if all the like odds are like, ah, you know, but I think for me, that's what it is like. You know, letting go of your pride sometimes and giving grace and truly just loving people and leaving those for that one yeah. to come back. Uh, yeah, and I love that because, you know, uh, sometimes when you're a life group leader or a pastor or whatever it is and, and, and you in and, and the group, you have, more, you know, people killing it. But then you have that one person that you doesn't want to listen and that keeps backsliding and backsliding and. And you and you go out of your way to get them back, but then they go backsliding again, and, and it could get frustrating to go after that ninety nine. But um, you know, I've been there just like you've been there, and I know that that you know God, the people that get it, and the yeah. people that are committed, and the people that are rooted. That's it. You know, you're having a eye to eye conversation, but there is no greater feeling than to go back for that one sheep. And it's like Pastor Abe said, you know, how can God start the celebration without that one sheep? And that's the one sheet we, we need to go after because for all you know, when God reaches that person, that person is going to just go to the next level. And, and I encourage you, you know, and even life group leaders are watching and you do have that person that, that you know, keeps backsliding or that you lost contact because the COVID or whatever is going on. 
don't hesitate. You know, you're not a babysitter, and we understand that, but you are a man or a woman that God trusted to help that person, yeah. and that's why he's in your he or her is in your life group. So I encourage you, life group leader, to to don't get frustrated, you know, and go after the 99, you know, and I love it. I, I love that that Jesus makes it so so powerful for us. Leave the 99 for the one. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's 99 sheep. You know, if it was up to me, I would have been like, what do I need that one sheep for? I would have been, I'm out, I'll, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so Angel, you know, Pastor Abe spoke about we are building God's house. And, and I, and I want to share something with you guys. Um, building God's house right now in this world with everything that's going on is powerful. Mm -hmm. I believe that God is doing something in all of us that is that is just amazing. And I saw it this Sunday outside in the tent, in the shade, that God is beginning to move in the hearts of people. And yeah, you know, unfortunately, you can blame the pandemic or you can blame whatever, but God's people are hungry and we're hungry for God. And, and, and it was so awesome to see the 9 a.m. service, uh, the 11 a.m. service, 1 p.m. service. And uh, Real quick, I want to take just a moment to say thank you to the production team, to the dream team, to the worship team, uh, to uh, Home Coffee, to the pastors. You know, we want to thank you who made it to the church service. We want to thank you that are continuing watching online. We love you guys. We're a church, a church about community. We're a church that wants to connect with you. We're a church that we want to be family. You know, we're all about families. And um, Angel, back to you. You know, you know, Pastor Abe said we need to be, we need to build a house. Uh, for people, uh, and we need to love people where they are, but we can't leave them where they're at. So what does that mean to you to love people where they are, but love them so much that you can't leave them where they are? Yeah, um, I think, you know, I think especially even in this season, I've learned, you know, what more of the, the fact that we are all human. And I think that that is something that I've definitely had to I think we've all known that, but it, I think it's more of a rev of a revelation that you have to receive from God and also from others is that we are human and that, um, like pastor TJ said, you know, especially being a shepherd, sometimes even as a leader, sometimes we feel like we're above or, you know, we're better than others. And it's like, no, we're all human. We all, have to recognize we're all sinners just the same. And we all need Jesus just as much as the other person next to us does. And I think in this season, a lot of us are going through, you know, turmoil. A lot of us are going through struggles and challenges, whether that's because of COVID or whether that's just because of personal life. And, you know, sometimes I think it can be as a human, sometimes you know, as a Christian, we'd love to say, we love people where they're at, you know, like, of course I'm going to love them where they're at. Like that's the God thing to do. And, you know, we want to be that, but sometimes we can be honest that sometimes it's hard. Like sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it gets tiring. Sometimes, um, you know, it get, it get, you get weary. And so, um, I know that in Galatians six, nine, someone just gave me this verse today. And I was, you know, I was all tired this morning. I was like, dang, like I'm just not having it. Um, and someone gave me this verse and just said like, don't grow tired of doing good for in due season, you will reap a harvest. And I think that doesn't just have to be in terms of leadership or in terms of doing as in like work. Um, but it could even be doing good for those, like as in loving people, because sometimes that can get tiring and sometimes it can get tiring because you're like, well, I'm doing so much. I'm putting out so much. It takes a lot of energy, but just like pastor TJ said, God says he's going to give you the, the strength that you need to do that. And so that if we would just keep loving people where they're at, they're going to come back home. Like, yeah, like it's not in our power to grab them and yank them from where they are. Like it's not our job to tell them like, you're a sinner, you're because we're sinners, but the way that people are going to see God, the way that people are going to encounter Jesus is through the love that they see from us, through the love that they see and the grace and the forgiveness and the joy that they see coming out of us as we love on them, as we continue to reach out to them, as we continue to show them who Jesus is. And the more that we do that, the more they'll come back to who God is. 
And can I add something? Absolutely. Um, and also, I think like loving them, but also loving one another. You know, because also in John it says that the world will the world will know that we are His followers by the way that we love one another. And I think that that's so important in the church because you know it was part of what you were saying, like understanding, having the revelation that we are humanity. You know, like I remember Pastor Abe said this one time. He said. The only difference between Christians and the people that are out there is that we're living our life with Jesus, mm -hmm. you know? It doesn't mean that we're not broken. It doesn't mean that we go through hard things, you know, we do. And I think that even through that and just accepting the fact that we are humans and people need to know that, you know, even as Christians, we're definitely not perfect, you know? But I think um, loving one another is a big thing, too, because how are you going to love people out there if you can't love your neighbor you know if you can't love the people that are you're constantly in community with and i think people people see that and people know that you know and people know that there's like drama in church and yada yada so like people don't want to come to church you know what i mean so i think that's a really big thing that has been in my heart is that people will know that we are his disciples by the way that we love one another yeah. and we love each other yeah. you know what i mean and then they'll be like i want to be a part of that yeah Wow, that's so powerful. And I, I agree with you both. So many great points. And uh, one of the things that I practice and, and um, you know, because if you, the Bible is endless and you're going to learn so many things. And, you know, as you go grow as a Christian, you'll begin to change your prayer life. You know, things inside of you begin to die and stuff like that. But I have two things that I live by. And that's what has helped me. And it's love God, love people. And I know that if I get that right, I'm going to be a better husband, a better dad, a better friend, a better leader, a better whatever. And I, and I, and I love that, what you said. Um, it's just so powerful when we say building the house. You know, we as a church have been going through a big transition, not only a transition within a transition, but now we have the COVID and stuff like that. But now I'm beginning to see God answer all our prayers. I'm beginning to see God begin to do so many things in all of us. And I'm like, wow, you know what I mean? Like, it's just amazing, you know. Um, Pastor TJ, you know, Pastor Abe talked about how we're here temporary to tell our stories. And I believe the powerful thing that we have as humans is our story. That's how people connect with us. That's how people know what Jesus did in our lives. And I want to ask you, Pastor TJ, because you've been here for a while. You're one of the pastors. You're the bishop. Um, for people that don't know you, Pastor TJ, what is your story? And when did you know God called you? Oh man, that's a it's a long story. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I, I do I do agree, and um, it really is a long story. So, and I know I know the clock's running down. So, uh, um, I, I like to say uh, a quote that every every human is a story wrapped in flesh, and um, I think the enemy in this time through this is robbing people of telling their stories. Yeah. And yeah. everyone, you know, they're talking politics and mask and no mask and all of these things. And I definitely have a strong, you know, um, view and opinion on things. But I refuse to sit in the seat of Pilate because we were called to sit in the seat of Christ. That's good. And I refuse to let anything uh, hinder me from loving my brothers and sisters or letting them feel loved by me. So the way that I'm able to connect to people the most is through our story. And so um, I was just even thinking about, I'm not, I am kind of evading the question, but I was thinking about Jen um, and just meeting her her mom and dad the, uh, the other night uh, when they came to the church. And so just hearing a little bit of her story, but also seeing that cool foundation she came from and uh, her, her parents just being God, a godly couple. So uh, I, I was really impressed by them. So sometimes you're so close, you don't, you don't see it all. But just yeah. from a, a, a step back, I was like, man, that, that, that's, that's powerful. I know they've been through a lot. I know y'all been through a lot as a family. But to have a family that's kind of uh, persevered in the faith. Yeah. And I know yeah. there's a lot of details to the story. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and uh, just to see God's grace in, in people's story. Um, I'll answer a quick part of the story. It's like a classic. Uh, um, I, w I was raised in church. And my uh, grandparents were like, like every time we go to their house, it was singing and worship. We weren't like play church. We were like real church. Someone was sick. We we're like, in the name of Jesus, you know, like 
uh, Instagram Christianity. I didn't know that one. Like we really believed everything we talked about. You know what I mean? Not all of it was right, but we really had like faith in every detail. Like I would go to school and pray for kids to be healed. I was like all about it because I believed everything about it. And I still, still believe Jesus with that passion. Um, and I remember I was 11 years old and there was this pastor, um, Jack Cunningham, and he was uh, preaching. If you feel uh, that God's called you for greater, you know, run up to this altar. And I knew right there, like God had assigned my life to ministry at 11 years old. Um, obviously, I was called, but not mature enough for the <laughs> to, I was called, but just because I was called wasn't mean, didn't mean I was ready, right? Yeah, yeah. But I, I was, I felt and acknowledged that call, and received it, and and uh, positioned my whole life to for for the calling. Yeah. So I didn't get involved with a bunch of girls. I was like, Phew. and so when my first wife passed away, I didn't get involved with different girls calling me. No, nope, I'm committed to my calling. So I think uh, there is a scripture that says to make sure of your calling so that you never fall. Wow. Powerful. You're like, I want to stay away from failure. Keep reminding yourself of yeah. your calling. Yeah. Well, that's, thank you so much for sharing. For everybody out there that's watching the breakdown, remember your story matters. And here at Heart Rapture, this is your home. This is your family. You know, if you've been coming and you haven't been connected to a live group, get connected to a live group. Drop it on the on the chat that you want to be part of a live group and somebody will reach out to you. We love you so much. Don't forget this Sunday we have service at 9, 11. Y para toda la raza en español a la 1 p.m. We'll see you guys here. We love you so much. And we can't wait till next time. Let's go. Bye.